Hello! So today we are going to talk about dangling and misplaced modifiers. Before we can talk about what a dangling or misplaced modifier is, we need to talk about what modifiers are. So a modifier describes, clarifies, or gives more detail on a concept. So then what is a dangling modifier? A dangling modifier is a word or phrase that modifies a word clearly not stated in the sentence. <clears throat> A misplaced modifier, on the other hand, is a word or a phrase that's just too far from the word it's trying to modify. So let's start with an example of a modifier. Having finished the chores, Maria turned on the TV. Having finished is naming the action, but does not name who completed the action in that phrase. Therefore, the doer has to be the subject of the main clause that comes afterwards. So it seems logical that she is finishing the chores and turning on the TV her being Maria, so therefore there is no dangling modifier. A sentence with a dangling modifier, though, would be having finished the chores, the TV was turned on. The TV is not the doer of the chores, therefore the doer of the action is not clearly stated, so we have a dangling modifier. So how do we fix dangling modifiers? The first is that we can name the doer of the action as the subject of the main clause. So a good way to do this is to ask the question, who is this talking about? So in an example, while taking a nap, the phone rings. We can ask who is taking a nap, a person or the phone? So if it's a person taking the nap, we could change it to while taking a nap, Maria's phone rings. <clears throat> so second, we can change the dangling phrase into an introductory clause by naming the doer in the clause. So going back to that while taking a nap, the phone rings, we can change it to while Maria was taking a nap, her phone rang. So we're putting that doer in the beginning, and so now we don't have a dangling modifier anymore. So the third thing we can do is combine the phrase and the main clause into one. So if we took an example, to improve her sleep, the phone was put on silent, we could change it to Maria improved her sleep by putting her phone on silent. So there's no pauses, we know exactly who's putting her phone on silent, and therefore we have no dangling modifier. And now that we've touched on dangling modifiers a little bit and the three steps to change them or the three different routes you can go to to change them, let's talk about how to fix misplaced modifiers. So really the basics of it is that you need to move them closer to the words they are modifying. So as an example, Sauced with lumpy gravy, the waitress served Gilbert a plate of gray meatloaf. Currently, the sentence is saying that the waitress is sauced with lumpy gravy. Instead, sauced with lumpy gravy should be moved closer to meatloaf, which is what it's modifying. So the corrected sentence would be, the waitress served Gilbert a plate of gray meatloaf sauced with lumpy gravy. So now that sauced with lumpy gravy is right next to the meatloaf, and there's no confusion on whether it's the meatloaf or the waitress that's sauced with lumpy gravy. So let's do some examples together. First, Emma Sue was delighted when Mr. Smith returned her calculus test with an ear-to-ear -ear grin. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the modifying phrase is. So Emma Sue was delighted when Mr. Smith, that's okay, returned her perfect calculus test, that's okay, with an ear-to-ear -ear grin. Okay, so now I'm starting to look at that and I'm trying to figure out, is it the calculus test with an ear-to-ear -ear grin? Is it Mr. Smith with an ear-to-ear -ear grin? Or is it Emma Sue with an ear-to-ear -ear grin? So this is kind of where we need to figure out um, where that modifier should be placed. If Mr. Smith is the one who's seeing the test as he's handing it back to Emma Sue, it could possibly be him that has an ear-to-ear -ear grin. So instead, we could change the sentence to, with an ear-to-ear -ear grin, Mr. Smith returned the perfect calculus test which delighted Emma Sue. So now we know who's smiling ear to ear, um, that Mr. Smith's giving her back the test, and that Emma is delighted. So we're just moving the order of those words to create more clarity. All right, number two. Scrubbing the tile grout with bleach in an old toothbrush, the mildew stains began to fade. So as the sentence stands right now, it leads me to ask who is scrubbing um, the tile grout? Is it the mildew scrubbing the tile grout? Because as it's written right now, that's the subject that comes in the main clause. 
So because we're left asking who, we need to add in somebody. So we could change the sentence to, as Michael scrubbed the tile grout with bleach in an old toothbrush, the mildew stains began to fade. Now we know who's responsible for the scrubbing and we're no longer left wondering who. Number three, to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, the computer keyboard sang with Sylvia's flying fingers. Okay, well, the computer's not the one that's trying to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline. It's Sylvia. So we need to move those around so that Sylvia is the one that's actually doing the action. So instead, we could write, to finish by the 3 p.m. deadline, Sylvia made the keyboard sing with her flying fingers. So now everything's clear. We know that Sylvia is the one trying to finish by the deadline instead of her computer, like originally written. All right, next I have some that I want you to take a little bit of time and try and figure out on your own. Number one, slathering the popcorn with melted butter, the calorie count skyrocketed. All right, so let's see how you did. So in this sentence, we have a dangling modifier because we don't know who is slathering the popcorn with melted butter. So any name that you put in here will work. Um, so a correct sentence would be when Ada decided to slather the popcorn with melted butter, the calorie count skyrocketed. So the calorie count isn't slathering the popcorn with the butter. We need to put a person in there so that it's no longer a dangling modifier. Number two. Attached to the email, Charlotte sent her boyfriend Byron another photographic self-portrait with eerie red eyes. Okay, so in this we have a misplaced modifier because Charlotte is not attached in an email like the sentence written right now would suggest. So instead we need to change the sentence around so that attached to the email is closer to what it's actually modifying. For example, you could have Charlotte emailed her boyfriend Byron another photographic self-portrait with eerie red eyes. So now it's clear who's emailing who and that she's emailing a picture and not attaching herself as a person. Number three. Hungry for dinner, the surface is where Gert the goldfish waited in anticipation for food flakes. All right, and just like the last one, in this one we have a misplaced modifier as well. The surface is not hungry for dinner, Gert the goldfish is. So we just need to rearrange the sentence a little bit so that way Gert the goldfish is closer to the fact that he's hungry. So you could change it to hungry for dinner, Gert the goldfish waited at the surface in anticipation of food flakes. So now we know that it's Gert that's hungry and not the surface. Okay, so now that we've practiced dangling and misplaced modifiers a little bit, if you are still having any troubles with the concepts, please feel free to see me after class or after school. Additionally, in the description box below, there is a Google form with 10 questions in it, and it will tell you if the, your answers are right or wrong at the end of the form, as well as tell you why your wrong answer is wrong. Additionally, if you need more help, you can go to Al Purdue, EnglishGrammar101.com, ChompChomp.com, or Khan Academy. Those all have great resources to try and give you some more practice problems or maybe explain it in a different way that might benefit you more. Lastly, like I said, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching.